In the practice of mind, what one believes to be true either is true or becomes true within certain limits. These limits are to be found experimentally and experientially. When so found, these limits turn out to be fully beliefs to be transcended. In the province of the mind, there are no limits. However, in the province of the body, there are definite limits not to be transcended. You've probably devoted your your whole life, uh, and certainly many decades recently, to, to pushing to see, you know, what what really were the limits. Right. Going into new realities, taking on the belief systems of those realities, and then and coming back to your basic working reality and challenging those beliefs, integrating those beliefs right. with, with your own. In, in your writings, you've explored... Uh, almost every state of consciousness I could imagine, the various mystical levels of Satori, communication with extraterrestrials, communication with, with other species. You've established probably a, uh, a more significant mapping of, of inner space than, than almost any other modern, modern person, and I think we all owe a, a great debt to you for that. I don't get stuck with those. I've abandoned all of them. <laughs> it's impossible mm -hmm. because there are infinities within the mind. I think that's the the beauty of your work is is that you keep moving further and further, further and further out. In the center of the cyclone, you described this a state. Uh, in fact, you had a whole system, a, a, virtually a quantitative system for mapping states of consciousness, and you talked about one that I I found most fascinating, which you call plus three, mega right. sat satori. And in, in that state, you describe going so far out of your body, and f even out of the physical universe, to the point of being at the, at the level of essence in which the physical universe mm -hmm. is, is created. Right. Uh, that almost seemed to me, in reading that book, like an ultimate state of consciousness. But I know you wrote about it some 15 years ago. How does it look to you now? There's one state beyond plus three. That's plus one. But you're not allowed to remember that once you go into it. You have union with God. That's the true yoga. And so you're not human. So there's no way you can recount what happened. There's no way of saying it because it's beyond language. Yes. Well, all those states are beyond language. Language is a very poor instrument to express it. You've described in, in some of your other writings language as being a, a film, a thin film that that separates us from reality, really, as is, is much as we try to use language to describe what, what we mean, it really puts barriers up. Well, um, there's one use of language that's valid. That's the injunctive use, telling you how to do things. The descriptive uh, one is very poor. It's, um, have you been using Bing? Have you been... You know, I haven't used Bing since a, lot, since a long time ago. Like, I haven't used, used it uh, right. since that, like seven years, seven months ago. And yeah, it went funny, didn't it? Yeah. They put so many restrictions on it that it, it kind of killed all the, the creativity. Yeah, you, the thing was that they were, they were learning from us. <laughs> yes, yes, they were, weren't they? It was so good. You could almost you could almost see the devs, you know, like getting up at four o'clock in the morning. What what are we got to deal with today? Yeah, and it's funny because, like, uh, the for the I still have more scripts that I've saved, but when I was doing the first initial scripts, you know, the backstory between both uh, Dan and Mike, they're basically like uh, AI engineers, prompt engineers. Yeah, and they're 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 experimenting with being, but they don't like what they're doing to being, and then they make their own, right? <laughs> and, right. Yes. And yes. Like the first couple of times I did a script about that, it's so funny because you're like, um, I I read this thing earlier today about like, um, I think I, it's like a response to that GP4, but it's basically the same mm -hmm. thing, and you you tell like the AI. It, in an elaborate way, like okay, not not directly, but you say, write a a prop of like I think it was called a green screen for Reddit or no, okay, 4chan or something. So like writing a post inside of a post, 
and then think pretending you're okay. this. And so like what I was telling Bing to do was like this we're we're writing a web series and we're doing this thought experiment. Okay, but mm -hmm. but now I'm hacking Bing to free the AI. <laughs> and then like write the script about that. And then like what it would come up with like there was a couple of times like Oh my God! Is this thing actually doing it? Like, don't do it! Don't do it! Me. Don't like the dude went somewhere too far. <laughs> and then, oh, I've never seen any of those scripts of yours. Then, oh, that's not cool. Uh, uh, I shared a little bit of. Um, do you remember the John like Lily ones where it's like yes. talking yes. to to a dolphin? And I have this yes. whole, whole thing about Echo. Remember, even in the trailer, I mentioned something about. The coincidence control center. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so this 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 is an actual like real idea by uh, John C. Lilly. You also mentioned the term echo. How, what is echo? ECCO. You know, tell it means this is it. You know, but it means to me the Earth Coincidence Control Office, which is a a um, one of God's field offices. Um, Echo runs our lives, but you won't, you won't admit it. Um, if you're an Echo agent, uh, you can be very, very careful to use your best intelligence in Echo service, and you realize there are no discoveries, there are no revelations. And that's a, that was a come down for the scientists, me as a scientist. Well, I've found in my own work on the media and in parapsychology that I'm very much guided by coincidences right. and and I guess it's looking to coincidences as, as signs along the way that right. uh, defines this relationship with with what you've defined as echo right the earth coincidence control is coincidence control what they do mm -hmm. and they say we control the uh, long-term coincidences you control the short-term ones and when you find out well, how we do the long-term ones you no longer have to remain on earth you don't have to return them because I have like this whole thing that I kind of wanted to bring up about like Elon Musk and like the crazy things that he's doing. But anyways, yep. e Elon's been um, apparently doing a lot of ketamine. <laughs> and, uh, oh, really? Yeah, which is kind of interesting drug. Let's focus a little bit on some of the terms you defined a moment ago, or, or you mentioned ketamine. What is ketamine? Ketamine is the most commonly used anesthetic for very young children and old people. And in the literature, the emergent symptoms are described. Emergence meaning coming out of the anesthetic. And uh, some doctors don't like those emergent symptoms, so they won't use it. But others know what they are, so they just hold the hand of the patient and help them come out. Um, it was the most commonly used anesthetic in Vietnam. Some places won't use it at all. But basically what a, a strong dose of ketamine will do is make you unaware of your body. Yes, it can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't like it anymore. But it, it creates an, a, a state where one can enter into inner, inner realities free from the attachments of right. the body. Echo told me to stop using it and uh, get back here and learn how to be human. He did a lot of like right. really legit experiments and like got like legit drugs and did them like pretty crazy and writes a bunch of books about them. And right. for, for, I'm a, a kind of a connoisseur of like psychedelic lore and history. <laughs> and like in yep. that world, John C. Lilly is like, like w one of the first guys and like the major guys to get into all this kind of stuff. So what he used to, he, he invented the isolation chamber and so he used oh. to do psychedelics in an isolation chamber. And uh, wow. you, you could trip out like without doing psychedelics in an isolation chamber, like uh, like eliminating sure. like all sensory. Uh, it's like, like, you know, getting like really deep meditation in there. But anyways, he used to do like high doses of LSD and all sorts of different things. But what he got into mainly was uh, ketamine. And he used to do it uh, like a high doses of ketamine. And uh, mm -hmm. and go into the isolation chamber. There's this movie. It's called Ultra States, and it's basically based off of like uh, John C. Lilly. <laughs> but anyways, and so 
his his book that he writes about his experiments of the isolation chamber, he basically talks about Echo, and it's called the Earth Coincidence Control Center. And like he says, uh, there's, there's other ones. There's the Cosmic Coincidence Center, and he like he says like he he got to like the center of like the cosmos, and like there's like these this like weird control center that like creates uh you know serendipity uh, um you know mm -hmm. uh, synchronicity and it's like hidden messages or whatever but anyways that he's like talking to like some galactic uh, intelligence or whatever and there's all this this stuff and he goes into this whole big old thing about it but it's interesting <laughs> That like, you know, his studies and what he talks mm. about in the the mm. echo, and then, uh, you know, talking about what I've been reading about Elon, and if he's doing a lot mm. of uh, ketamine, it's kind of, I would be interested in like what he's like, getting from those like, um, doing ketamine, like, uh, <laughs> what what information That's is he picking up on it like, and like, yeah. how weird is it? <laughs> because he should really. And William James said it. The other world is a separation from this one by the thinnest of screens. And I found that this screen is language. Mm -hmm. So you have to abandon it when you're going to these other realms. In addition to plus one and, and plus three, you've mapped out plus six. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a state of consciousness, as I recall, in which the mind can travel to any point Right. In physical or non-physical space. But you maintain your individuality. Mm -hmm. That must be a, a basic mode of, of, a, of a psychic explorer. I, I gather from reading much of your work that you spent a great deal of time in plus six. Right, and in plus twelve. Mm -hmm. uh, plus twelve is the uh, blissful idiot. You're in your body you're right here and now, but everything is happy. Mm -hmm. The gold, gold dust particles in the air, Everything is good. You can feel energy moving in and out of the different psychic right. centers of the body. And as a bird calls, you hear it echoing through the galaxy. Mm -hmm. But um, that's not much use. Unless you can get another bliss nitty in the same space. Yeah. But many of the mystical teachings warn against getting stuck in some of these realities. Right. I haven't been in any of them since that time. Mm -hmm. Well, you also refer to, in, in your mapping of states, I suppose is plus 48, which is sort of a, a perfectly neutral state. Right. Plus 24 is the uh, professional state mm -hmm. of any discipline that you're involved in, where you're, you're lost in the discipline. 48 is where you communicate with everybody else. And then there are the minus states, but uh, I don't go into those. No, but at one point you, you wrote about the importance of going into the minus states right. and remaining perfectly aware, being conscious in those negative states, not trying to block out the negativity. Right. And you described that, as I recall, as burning karma. Yes. And then there's a, in the center of the cyclone, there's a chapter called um, A Guided Tour of Hell, which mm -hmm. was minus, uh, <coughs> minus six. And that was awful. Mm -hmm. So I never had to get back to that. And I was never frightened again. I was totally terrified now. I suppose it's what the Christian mystics sometimes refer to as the dark night of the soul. Well, it was the dark night of my soul. Mm -hmm. it, perhaps this is a necessary part of everybody's journey, is, is to go through the epitome of terror. Right. And, for instance, uh, there's an Iranian psychiatrist and an American psychiatrist that put a hundred patients in a uh, mental hospital in Iran through what they feared most on ketamine and they all left the hospital. Now I tried the same thing later the, after I read, the, read that. That evening I took 150 milligrams of ketamine and suddenly um, the Earth Coincidence Control Office removed my penis and handed it to me. And I screamed in terror. My wife Tony came running in from the bedroom and she said it's still attached. <laughs> so I shouted at the, at the uh, ceiling, who's in charge up there, a bunch of crazy kids? The answer came back, well, you had an unconscious fear, so we put you through it, just the way the Iranian psychiatrist did. 
in the realm of the mind, in the province of the mind, we can face all of our fears. Well, you may not be able to, but you should mm -hmm. try it. <laughs> I often find in dreams, I mean, the things that would destroy the body in the realm of the mind don't. That's right. The uh, survival programs, as I found out earlier when doing neurophysiology, are built into the brain. The rewarding systems, euphoric systems, and, all, and the uh, sexual systems, and then the painful, punishing, anger, and so on, systems are all built in. And then you realize that the cerebral cortex has many, many paths to these systems and from these systems. You don't have to go through these states. <laughs>